In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to find a ground fault on a Class B SLC loop with T-taps. Now, as you can see here, I have my Simplex 4010 demonstration board, and there's one trouble in the system right now, and that is a negative earth ground fault, which that's one thing I do like about Simplex, is they do tell you if it's a negative or positive earth ground fault. Now, as you can see here, I have six device spots plus that pull station down there. In one of these spots, I have a ground fault that I put behind a device. I just took a wire and shorted it from the back box to the negative terminal um, and that created a negative earth ground fault. Now I know this is on the SLC circuit of the panel, um, but if you don't know if it's on the SLC or NAC or any other circuit of the panel, you basically just take the positive or negative wire off of each circuit, um, depending on if it's negative or positive earth ground fault until the ground fault goes away. Um, in this demonstration I already know it's on the SLC, but if you don't, just do that. So the first thing we're going to do is find where the T-tap is, which it might take a while if you haven't worked on the system before, but I know the T-tap is in this box right here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pull off the cover of this back box, and as you can see right there, there's the T-tap. Now, this wire right here with the black mark on it is coming from the SLC terminals on the panel, and all the rest of the wires are going to branches of the SLC on the system. One of them goes over to these two devices, one of them goes down to the other three, and one of them goes back to the other side of the board that has a couple devices on it. Now since we know it's a negative earth ground fault, we're going to go ahead and pull apart the negative wire nut here. And now if you don't have a simplex for your TED or your panel just doesn't show if it's a negative or positive earth ground fault, just do the same thing I'm doing but with the positive and negative. So I'm basically just going to unscrew this wire nut and separate each branch of the SLC circuit. Now you can hear that there can be some troubles popping up because um, all the devices are disconnected. Now we want to find the one that's coming from the panel, which is this one right here, and separate it. And these remaining three right here are our three legs of the SLC coming off of this junction. Now if your ground fault has not gone away, that means your ground fault is between your very first junction and the panel, which probably means a chafed wire or water damage or an internal ground fault on the panel. But if your ground fault goes away, which hopefully it should, that means your ground fault is on one of these three um, T-taps. And if I scroll through the troubles on the panel, I can see that there is no negative earth ground fault coming up anymore. Which means that it is one of these three circuits. So now what I'm going to do is take one of the branch circuits and the one coming from the panel and connect them together. And a few of the devices will come back, but the rest should stay off. And if the ground fault comes back, that means that the ground fault is on that leg of the SLC, which if we trace this wire back, is the devices going down here. Now I connected it, a few of the troubles went away, and there is still no ground fault, which means that the ground fault is not down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this wire right here and bring it in. Now you can leave these two connected or pull them apart, it does not matter. I'm going to leave them connected just because it's a little bit easier. Now those are connected, a few more troubles went away, now we only have three, and there's still no ground fault. So now we know it's on this one, but I'm just going to go ahead and connect it just to be sure. Now I'm also actually going to go ahead and disconnect the other two coming off, and just connect the one going back to the panel. And there's going to be some troubles coming up because of the uh, devices we just took off and if I scroll through the troubles I can see that the negative ground fall just came back. So that means that it is on this branch the SLC right here. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these. You don't have to disconnect them, I'm just going to. Depending on how big that branch the SLC is you might have multiple T-taps coming off of that. You can do the exact same thing for each branch. Now once you have figured out exactly which span of devices the ground fault's in, you actually have to go to each device, pull it apart, and actually check the wiring. Now, lucky for me, there's only two devices. There's a monitor module right here, and there's a smoke right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the smoke head and see if there's a ground fault behind there, which is commonly a chafed wire, water damage, or a damaged device. Alright, so now once I pull it off, as you can see, there's our ground fault, which I just put a wire here, 
Normally it'd be a chafed wire or something like that, but I just put a wire here just so it wouldn't go away while we were troubleshooting. So as you can see, it goes from the metal back box, which is grounded by the panel, and it connects to the ground terminal on the detector base. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this wire by unscrewing it from the detector base. Like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew it from the back box. Just like that. So now that we have cleared the ground fault, we can go ahead and put this detector base back together. And now the detector base is put back together, I'm going to go ahead and put the head back on. And now we can go ahead and put the T-tap back together. Now keep in mind there might be multiple ground faults on a system, especially if it's a large system. So I can go ahead and put that back in the box and put the cover back on. Just like that, and tighten it down. And if we go back to the panel, as you can see, there are no troubles, which means we have fixed the ground fault. Now I'm going to make a separate video on troubleshooting a Class A SLC circuit or a Class B SLC circuit that doesn't have any T-taps, so make sure you watch out for that. Um, hopefully this helps you fix your ground fault, and I will see you next time.